One of the most important procedures we needed to develop was moving from achievement level based on a rubric to letter grade, grade point average, and finally, cumulative GPA. This is particularly critical and unique at the high school level. In the coming slides, I will examine that process. In a standards-based system, student performance on the standard is based on a four-level achievement scale, one through four. There are a couple important factors to consider. Earning a four is not only possible, we will actually teach to the four. We believe that by teaching to the four, we can help all students raise their performance level. We recognize the importance of GPA and letter grades on college admission and scholarships. Therefore, we will not jeopardize a student's opportunity to maintain the highest grade point average possible. This slide represents the traditional letter grade percentage and GPA chart we currently use. In the coming slides, I will demonstrate how this chart with modifications is applied to standards-based assessment and reporting. One of the most important questions we need to address is, how will you convert achievement level, 4321, to letter grades without using percentages? On this slide, you'll see the letter grade achievement level chart. You'll notice that the achievement level ranges are exactly the same as our current GPA ranges. You'll also note that we no longer have a need for percentages. Next, you'll see a chart showing five standards, each with a series of achievement level ratings. These achievement levels represent the demonstration on the standard over time. One of the major benefits of standards-based structure is a repeated assessment of the same standard rather than a one-time chance like we often see in a traditional grading model. In this structure, we are taking the most recent achievement level for each standard, shaded in gray and highlighted in yellow. Here we take the total of the achievement level, 17, and divide by the number of standards, five. This results in an overall achievement level of 3.4. When we compare 3.4, to the range provided on the left side, we see that it falls in the range associated with an A minus. The student's letter grade for this class would be an A minus. The grade point average associated with an A minus is always a 3.667. It is critical to understand that regardless of where the student falls inside the A minus range, their GPA will always be a 3.667. Similarly, it doesn't matter where the student falls in the range of an A grade, they will receive a 4.0 GPA for their A. Here are a few points to note. The use of percentages are unnecessary in this model. Secondly, this is the exact same way GPA is currently determined. Finally, colleges only see and are only interested in the final GPA and not where the student fell in that range. In other words, all that matters to the colleges is that the student earned a specific grade, not where they fell in that range. In this slide, we will look at an example of traditional scoring. You'll notice that traditional scoring is focused on points. There are five questions with the possible four points each and a total of 20 points. This student earned three out of four on all five questions for a total of 15 points. This student receives a 75% or a C. You'll note that the traditional assessment is points driven, not concept driven. In this example of standards-based assessment, 
we are arranged by standards and the demonstrated achievement level on the specific standards. The direct tie between achievement level, not points, and the standard lies in stark contrast to a traditional grading system which equates points to success and doesn't consider depth of knowledge or the specific standard being assessed. Student achievement is rated on a zero to four scale rather than by points and percentages. In this case, the student demonstrates an achievement level rating between 3.0 and 4.0 on each standard. The student's overall achievement level is determined not by the number of points, but rather by the total of the achievement levels reached, 17, divided by the number of standards, 5. The resulting achievement level is a 3.4, which falls in the achievement level range associated with an A-. Let's connect the achievement level to the letter grade and the grade point average. You may recognize this chart because it is the exact same letter grade and GPA chart we currently use. In the standards-based system used at SCC, the achievement level, 0 to 4, and GPA, 0 to 4, serve a dual purpose. Number one, a student earns an achievement level between 0 and 4. This achievement level dic dictates the letter grade. In this case, the achievement level fell between a 3.001 and a 3.333, which equates to a B+. The letter grade then converts to a grade point average in the exact same manner as our current practice. Here are a couple other examples of letter grades being converted to grade point average. An A letter grade equals a 4.0 on the GPA scale. A C letter grade equals a 2.0 on the GPA scale. Again, you'll note that this conversion is exactly the same as it currently is used in our system. In this slide, I will demonstrate a simple example of how the cumulative GPA, or the GPA including all grades from ninth grade to senior year, is calculated. For the purposes of this example, I will use three semester classes. Class A, Class B, and Class C. I'm including a portion of the grade chart that was presented earlier as a reference point. In each class, we take the most recent score on each standard, shaded in gray, and divide their total, in this case, of 15 by the number of standards, four, to get the overall achievement level of a 3.75. The calculation I demonstrated to determine achievement level and letter grade will be applied to each class in the same manner as the previous example. You can see in class A, the student's overall achievement level is a 3.75. That falls into a range for a letter grade and we know an A is equal to a 4.0 on the GPA scale. In class B, the student's overall achievement level is a 3.38. That falls into the A minus range on the GPA scale, and we know an A minus is always equal to a 3.667 GPA. In class C, the student's overall achievement level is a 3.50. That falls into the A minus range on the GPA scale, and we know an A minus is equal to a 3.667 on the GPA scale. By adding up the three GPAs and dividing by the number of scores, we calculate the cumulative GPA to be a 3.778. This is the exact same method used to calculate cumulative GPA in our current model. 
Here are 10 educational principles that we will follow to ensure every student learns at their highest level possible. Number one, we will focus our work on student learning, not teaching and grading. That is, the complete focus of the adults will be on the student achievement through high quality teaching and learning practices. Number two, we will determine a student's proficiency level using the essential standards for the course. Number three, we will determine a student's proficiency level using summative assessments, not formative practice. It's important to remember that practice should be just that, practice without penalty. Number four, we will ensure proficiency of essential standards through reteaching and reassessing. Number five, we will report life skills separately and not as part of the academic proficiency level. Number six, we will not use extra credit. Number seven, we will assess students individually, even when they are working in groups. Number eight, we will not assign academic consequences for late work. We will look for evidence of proficiency no matter when it happens. Poor behavior choices will be dealt with behavior interventions. Number nine, we will use professional judgment in conjunction with performance data to determine a student's overall proficiency level. And number 10, we will provide students with opportunities to exceed proficiency. That concludes my explanation of standards-based grading and how we will apply it at St. Croix Central High School. It is not possible to provide a 100% complete explanation of standards-based assessment and reporting in one fairly short presentation. If you have questions, please email me at the, con at the address provided. I will be creating additional presentations focused on, focused on answering your questions and expanding on the other areas of standards-based assessment and reporting that I did not cover in this presentation. I encourage you to attend our community meetings Dates and details will be provided to all SCC families. Thank you for watching this presentation. Go Panthers!